So I can potentially give you an opportunity to talk a little bit about the default mode network. Can, can you, you talk some about that and, and just you know, the potential value in dissolving the ego? Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Um, the neuroscience that I learned about was, to me, intellectually, the most exciting part of doing this book. And, um, and, and that really is where we're learning, what, what we're learning about consciousness in the mind. So when, um, when neuroscientists first began imaging the brains of people on psilocybin or LSD, they would actually like inject someone with the medicine and slide them into that fMRI tube. And if you've ever been in an fMRI and you've ever tripped, imagine combining those two things. These volunteers, you know, yeah. deserve a hand. Um, that's I declined not, to be in this study, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that is serious volunteer duty. Um, what they expected to see, though, was, um, and this work was first done at Imperial College London by a brilliant neuroscientist named Robin Carhart Harris, who I, I profiled. Another white male, I'm sorry to report, but there it <laughs> is. Um, and, uh, and so they expected to see lots of activity on the fMRI and, you know, consistent with the fireworks that people report. Um, but what they saw instead was a, a reduction in activity in this one particular network that happens to be very important to our sense of self, and that is the default mode network. And this is a set of structures in the midline of the brain that connects structures that are within the uh, cortex, the evolutionarily most recent part of the brain uh, that has our executive function and higher order uh, functions, um, with deeper, older structures involved with memory and uh, emotion. And it's a hub in the brain. Lots of signals pass through it. It's like a Grand Central Station or something. And then it's also a regulator. Uh, as Robin calls it, it's the conductor of the neural symphony. It's, and, and so what does it do? Well, it's involved in self-reflection, as far as we know, and self-criticism and rumination. It's where your mind goes when it's wandering or worrying. It's involved in time travel, the ability to think about the future or the past, which is very important to a sense of identity. Without a sense of time, you don't have a sense of identity. Uh, it's involved in uh, theory of mind, which is the ability to imagine mental states in other people, which is critical to moral reasoning and ethical reasoning. And it's involved in something called the experiential self. Um, this is kind of where we generate the stories that um, connect what happens to us at any given time to this, uh, the story of who we are. Um, so how interesting that when this network goes quiet, or appears to on an fMRI, that's when people report an experience of complete ego dissolution. Um, what good is that? Well, the researchers, you know, are still speculating about it. They do think that ego dissolution, which some refer to as the mystical experience, I, I actually think they're pretty much the same thing. One is a spiritual vocabulary, one is a psychodynamic mm. vocabulary. Um, but similar things happen when you lose a sense of ego. You, you merge with other things because the walls come down. And that permits a reconnection. Um, with other people, with nature, with your past self, um, and that um, when our defenses are down, we can break out of the stories in which we trap ourselves. You know, those really destructive stories we tell about ourselves, and, and, and depressed people in particular, and addicts in particular, the story that says you can't get through the day without a drink, the story that says that you, you're unworthy of love. Um, we get stuck in these loops of rumination and recrimination. And the psychedelic experience of ego dissolution gives you um, uh, a new perspective. It's temporary, but you see that, wow, you don't have to think that way. Um, and those stories, they're, they're broken. They're, they're, their power over you is broken, e even if just for some, a period of time. But having had a taste of that other form of consciousness where you're not the victim of your loops of destructive thought can be liberating. Um, so that's a, that's, a, that's a theoretical hypothesis of how it works, um, but it's a compelling one. Yeah, and I think it's really interesting, this idea of decentralizing the brain. And it's very timely considering this theme, a lot of people here are probably from the blockchain world, uh, you know, this theme of decentralization. And so in many ways, psychedelics are like the, you know, decentralizing the brain in the same way that blockchains are decentralizing. Yeah, in that sense, they're anti-hierarchical. 
um, the experience. And, and actually, those of you who have the book in your lap, look at page 318. <laughs> Sorry, not everybody has it. But go outside and look at page 318 later. Um, and there's a map of the brain uh, on a placebo uh, and, and on um, psilocybin. And, there, uh, and so there's a perimeter in this map, and every circle represents a different brain network. Uh, the brain is organized in these networks. One deals with you know, locomotion, one deals with the visual cortex. And um, there are a few big highways in the first illustration. Yeah, I don't know if um, you can see this from oh, here, but you. it's. Very and when the default mode image. network goes down, all these new connections form that have never existed before. The brain is temporarily rewired, and suddenly you have this explosion of new pathways. And we don't know what's happening on those pathways. They could explain synesthesia, right? The phenomenon of, of, um, of uh, tasting a color. Uh, that may be the cross-wiring of two, two brain networks. Or the new insights or metaphors that people report. Those may be a new way to connect dots. Um, that's the exciting work, is to figure out what's going on in that new map and uh, what kind of thinking happens. But the fact is, the brain is being wired in a new way, temporarily, and that temporary rewiring can have lasting effects. 